What's up everybody, Big Sweet C here with you. Got a special little video for you today. Today, I want to continue our conversation about Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Last time I talked about how this was the lost gem of Dark Souls, and I still agree with that statement. A lot of you guys seem to agree with that statement. A couple of you guys didn't, but that's okay. Um, but I would be remiss if, and one of you guys had mentioned this in the comments, so thank you for that. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention soul memory now without a doubt soul memory is probably the number one fail the biggest fail on the part of dark souls 2 so if you are unsure of what soul memory is it differs from soul level soul level is still the overall level of your character whether you're level 1 level 5 level 50 level 100 that is your soul level that does not have any relation whatsoever to your soul memory count. The soul memory count is every soul that you have earned by killing an enemy. Now, the reason this is such a major fail is a couple of things. One, it kind of hurts newer players. Two, it really, really disrupts the idea of the jolly cooperation slash PvP that is supposed to be one of the mainstays in the Dark Souls franchise. What I mean by that is every time you kill an enemy, whether you use those souls to buy an item, upgrade a weapon, upgrade armor, increase your level, you're always collecting them. You never get rid of them. And the idea behind it was to make sure that everybody who's played for X amount of time only gets matched up with other people who have played for X amount of time. In theory, this is actually a fantastic idea. The biggest complaint that a lot of people had with the PvP in Dark Souls 1 was the fact that like people would keep their soul level artificially low. They would then not max out their weapons so they would be able to invade the super low level beginner type players and just hound them like the trolls they are. Now, in theory, soul memory is a fantastic idea because ideally, the more you play, the better you are. However, it turned out to be the biggest problem, biggest pain in the backside because it actually hindered newer players. For example, take myself. When I first played Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin, I had no idea what I was doing. I went through the whole beginning level, got into Majula, had no idea where to go after that, so I ended up going into Hyde's Tower of Flame. Anybody who plays the game knows that that is actually kind of a little bit farther into the game, and they have some higher level character enemies that, uh, that you shouldn't be looking at, shouldn't be fighting against, a little bit later in the game so i went in there killed a bunch of people died went in there killed a bunch of people died went in there died lost all my souls now the reason that this is a problem is because now i have no souls to upgrade my character stats i have no souls to increase my weapons upgrade my weapons upgrade my armor but i still have that soul memory count on my display so now even though i'm still a beginner i am now put into another category with better players on the flip side as i got better i would get farther into the game dying less times so i would have a lower soul memory so i would be able to get into these guys games where they were just beginners they had no idea what they were doing and we were still at the same memory level, even though we were not at the same talent level. That was the problem. <clears throat> the other problem with the Jolly Cooperation was the fact that if I wanted to go ahead and play a little bit farther into the game, and my brother or my friends that was playing with me didn't want to or they couldn't because they had to work or something, now I'm playing myself out of the cooperation with my brother and my other friends. Once you reach a certain threshold, you can no longer cooperate with people of a lower threshold. And vice versa, lower people cannot meet 
the upper threshold. And so cooperation and PvP became a huge pain in the backside because everybody was at varying levels and you could never quite keep it at that same level at the pace you wanted to go. It was always, we have to plan this ahead of time and then go ahead and figure out when we can play. That way we only play together. That way when you gain souls, I gain souls. I don't gain souls that you don't gain. And then we can stay within that range. It totally messed up everything. It really put a lot of people off because especially those new people that were like dying for people to help them out. They would get at these parts where they'd have so much soul memory and be so early in the game they wouldn't be able to summon anybody. I, I specifically think of the pursuer boss fight if you actually fight him in the boss fight area. You cross that fog wall, it, it, he's only like the second or third boss in the game. If you were like me when I first started playing it, you should have been halfway through the game by the time I actually got there. And so I had zero people to summon. I'd sit there and I'd wait for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, no signs would show up. And it was basically like that the whole first playthrough of my game. And so I had to literally start over to be able to play with my brother because there would be no way that I would actually be able to get to play that character with any of my brother's characters. They were either too high level or too low level. And it became a massive pain in the ass. It also hurt a lot of new beginners because they would get into these areas, finally, but they would have the sole memory of somebody that's already played through the game, maybe one full time and is on their second playthrough. They have all the best equipment, they have it all maxed out, and then they would keep invading these new beginners who have no choice but to go through these levels because they, they're not that far into the game yet, and they would just get terrorized by these trolls that would just keep invading these low level players. And in my opinion, it probably probably turned a lot of people off from the game. And it turned a lot of people off from the whole Dark Souls franchise in general. And um, But again, totally saw the idea. It just didn't work out very well. Luckily, with the Scholar of the First Sin edition, they added the Agape Ring, which allowed you to earn souls without actually earning souls. The Agape Ring would take all the souls you earned from you. You wouldn't gain any soul memory. So it helped out a little bit, but again, you have to get so far into the game before you can even purchase that ring. So if you're, you know, a beginner player, there's a good chance you might not even make it that far into the game to get the Agape ring to be able to go around to these places and not accrue soul memory. So it, um, it was kind of a disappointment at first. Uh, I had no idea really how it worked and why I was getting screwed so bad by it. So it, it was, without a doubt, the biggest fail on Havoc's part when they created Dark Souls 2. In hindsight, it doesn't actually ruin the game for me. I hope it doesn't ruin the game for anybody else. But it was a terrible, terrible idea. Now, I, I, again, I don't want to throw them under the bus because I'm sure they had great intentions. It seems like a great intention idea. But it was one of those things that really needed to be tested out way, way in advance to see if it was going to work before they actually implemented the idea. And it just seems like they were so hell-bent on rushing this game out that they didn't really pay any attention to it, or they didn't bother to let anybody that wasn't very into the Dark Souls games play it to see how newer players would, would react to it, how they would fall victim to it, or how uh, better players could then kind of troll newer players because of it. So it uh, it was one of those things where I had to bring it up because it, it is a huge problem. Now there, there's other th issues that I have with the game. <laughs> the Shrine of Amana comes to mind. <laughs> but, um, but all in all, I do generally enjoy Dark Souls 2 quite a bit. Um, but I would be a re uh, reminisce, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that they did fall flat on their face when they came up with the idea of the soul memory. It was a terrible idea. I'm super glad they got rid of it in Dark Souls 3. Although now that they have the password system, it doesn't really matter. The password system has cured all of that. I kind of wish they, they have the password system in, in the Dark Souls Remastered, which is fantastic. Um, 
but uh, but they they didn't with Dark Souls 2. They didn't with Dark Souls 2: Scholar of the First Sin, and um, it needs to be called out for the bad idea that it was. Don't let it discourage you from trying this game though, because it is fantastic. Uh, but uh, but I had a couple of people comment on it, and um, so I wanted to bring it to light because it is it, it it's a bad idea. It was a bad idea. Um, it didn't work out very well, and uh, somebody should have probably seen that coming. <laughs> to be honest with you, somebody should have probably seen that coming. But um, neither here nor there. Definitely check the game out anyway because uh, I enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, I've been helping our friend the channel Scavenger out on Friday nights, so uh, be sure to check that out. Hit the like bell, hit the notification bell, uh, hit the sub button so you do know when I drop the uh, drop another video or go live with some Dark Souls too, uh, if you're interested. Either way, that's going to do it for this one, Big Sweet C. That's me wishing YouTube that's you. Wonderful day, night, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it might be. Long as you're watching, I'm wishing you a wonderful watching time. Sweetness, signing off. Peace.